Good evening. Today we continue our daily reading of the Word. We're in the book of 1 Kings chapter 11, as always stated prior to reading. Get to a church that has Sunday school or Bible study where the Word can be broken down and more easily understood. Get with some friends who are just breaking bread and having church with one another and get an understanding from them. Also get you a Bible. There are numerous versions, King James, the NIV. But most importantly, above all, call upon the Lord. If you knock at his door, he will answer and he will give you wisdom if that is truly what you seek. Amen. First King chapter 11 reads, King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will supply... They will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. He followed Ashoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites, so Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely as David his father had done. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all the foreign wives who, who burned incense and offered sacrifice to their gods. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, since, there is your, since this is your attitude and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son, yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Then the Lord raised up against Solomon an adversary, Hadad the Edomite, from the royal line of Edom. Earlier when David was fighting with Edom, Joab the commander of the army who had gone up to bury the dead had struck down all the men of Edom. Joab and all the Israelites stayed there for six months until they had destroyed all the men of Edom. But Hadad, still only a boy, fled to Egypt with some Edomite officials who had served his father. They set out for Midian and went to Paran. Then, taking people from Paran with them, they went to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave Hadad a house and land and provided him with food. Pharaoh was so pleased with the Hadad that he gave him a sister of his own wife, Queen Tahin, Tahapins, in marriage. The sister of Tahapins bore him a son named Ganuaboth who Tephine brought up in the royal palace. There Ganuaboth lived with Pharaoh's own children. While he was in Egypt, Hadad heard that David rested with his ancestors and that Joab, the commander of the army, was also dead. Then Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me go, that I may return to my own country. What have you lacked here that you want to go back to your own country? Pharaoh asked. Nothing, Hadad replied, but do let me go. And God raised up against Solomon another adversary, Rizan, son of Elidia, who had fled from his master, Hadadezer, Hadadezer, king of Zobah. When David destroyed Zobah's army, Rizan gathered a band of men around him and became their leader. They went to Damascus, where they settled and took control. Rizan was Israel's adversary as long as Solomon lived, adding to the trouble caused by Hadad. So Rizan ruled in Aram and was hostile toward Israel. Also, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, rebelled against the king. He was one of Solomon's officials, an Ephraimite from Zeradah, and his mother was a widow named Zeruah. Here is an account of how he rebelled against the king. Solomon had built his terrace, terraces and had filled in the gap in the wall of the city of David, his father. Now Jeroboam was a man of standing, and when Solomon saw how well the young man did his work, he put him in charge in the whole labor force of the tribes of Joseph. About that time, Jeroboam was going out to Jerusalem, and Ahijah, the prophet of Shiloh, met him on the way, wearing a new cloak. The two of them were alone out in the country. When Ahijah took hold of the new cloak, he was wearing it, tore it into twelve pieces. There he said to Jeroboam, 
Take ten pieces for yourself, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. See, I am going to tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hand and give you ten tribes. But for the sake of my servant David in the city of Jerusalem, which I have chosen, out of all the tribes of Israel, he will have one tribe. I will do this, this because they have forsaken me and worship Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Kamash, the god of the Moabites, and Molech, the god of the Ammonites, and have not walked in obedience to me, nor done what is right in my eyes, nor kept my decrees and laws as David, Solomon's father, did. But I will not take the whole kingdom out of Solomon's hand. I have made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of David, my servant, whom I chose, and who obeyed my commands and decrees. I will take the kingdom from his son's hands and give you ten tribes. I will give one tribe to his son, so that David, my servant, may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I chose to put my name. However, as for you, I will take you, and you will rule over all that your heart desires. You will be king over Israel. If you do whatever I command you and walk in obedience to me and do what is right in my eyes by obeying my decrees and commands as David my servant did, I will be with you. I will build you a dynasty as enduring as the one I built for David and will give Israel to you. I will humble David's descendants because of this, but not forever. Solomon tried to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam fled to Egypt to Shishak, the king, and stayed there until Solomon's death. As for the other events of Solomon's reign, all he did and the wisdom he displayed are they not written in the book of the annals of Solomon? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. Then he rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, succeeded him as king. Amen.